Topic for today's video is how to book a set. This is one of the most common questions that I get asked over and over again by students. How do I book a set? How do I book a set? How do I book a set? What is it that I need to do differently to book the set? It's interesting to me because it's something that I, I do very naturally after all these years, and it was it was very sort of almost hard for me to break it down. It's very intuitive. Um, it's very like kind of it feels almost more like a flow than a technique to me. But I had one very particularly anal retentive uh, student recently really wanted a specific breakdown on exactly how to do it. And fortunately, um, I was an immersion, so I was able to take some of his film and actually break down exactly what he was doing. What I realized is, the reason I think why people have trouble hooking sets, or understanding how to hook sets, is because it's not one thing that you need to do, it's several distinct things. I've actually currently broken it down to four distinct things that you need to do, in fact, four distinct stages of hooking. And what you need to do in one stage is different and distinct from what you need to do in the other stages. So it's not a question of you just do this one thing and they'll be hooked. It's not like this one magic bullet, one magic pill. It's, it's four magic pills. I realized that these categories just happen to map on, very interestingly, to a video I once saw, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Um, if you guys have ever seen the Always Big Closing speech, um, there's a secondary part to that that's much less famous, which is he talks about um, AIDA, attention, interest, decision, action. Um, and I realized in breaking down how to how to hook that I was basically teaching attention, interest, decision, action, how to get from the open to the hook. And the interesting thing is that this can happen almost instantaneously oftentimes. Like you see those sets where, for example, if you hook to something like Hand of God, they take it, you pull them in, and you should see eye contact, sexual intent right there on immediately. All those four steps occurred in a fraction of a second. It was so fast, but they still all four did occur. And then you also see the different sets where um, it takes up to like three minutes or even like five minutes to get the hook, where it's this gradual teeth pulling process of trying all these different things, manipulating the situation, passing shit tests, and then finally, after all this egregious hard work, you get the hook. But I realized the process is exactly the same, it's just elongated over uh, more time. In theory, you should be able to hook almost any set that at least gives you the time of day. Now, if you open so weakly that the girl just turns away and like acknowledges you as homeless, that's a problem. But anything short of that, you should be able to hook. And actually, even sometimes that can hook if you do the right thing in the second phase, which is the interest phase. Without further ado, let's get into the four stages of hooking. Put that coffee down. A-I-D-A, -A, attention, interest, decision, action. First stage of booking, uh, and this is almost kind of cheating to consider a stage of booking. This is essentially opening, but is attention. All right. In order for anything to occur in social interaction, in order for anything to work later, in order for you to have any leverage, you must first have attention. If you're still trying for attention, if you don't have someone focused on you, if you don't have, you know, a start to a conversation, you can't do anything conversationally. It just goes without saying. Um, this is probably the simplest, most intuitive of the stages. Um, it's it goes back to the whole theory, which is the point of the opener is just to open that is all, um, and from there you can work. So the key thing here is to be assertive, is to be noticed, is to have that attention. So um, you need to be loud, have a good tone of voice, be willing to use physicality, even be willing to be a bit shocking, it's okay. You would rather have girls jump in the air and scream than have them not notice you. The response you don't want is, Right? You don't want non-response. Any response is workable. Now, obviously, a positive response is better, but any response is workable. That's why I say the first stage is simply attention. Again, if you do a good job, a lot of times these stages will be going through in rapid succession. You may fly through three stages instantaneously. That's totally fine. In fact, that's how it should be most of the time. But be aware of it that the key ingredient at the start is just attention. Now. If what you're doing for attention is so ludicrous that it keeps you from having the interest step or the decision or action steps, that's where you run into bad openers. So that's where if you're completely insulting to get attention, or if you do something completely clownish to get attention, you're working against yourself and you're going to make the other stages take longer. So it's not ideal, but again, theoretically, as long as you have the attention, you're in a winnable situation. Okay? So that's it. 
get the attention, very simply. But if you can do it on your own terms, you can do it from a place of high value without appearing try hard. If you can do it from a place of making it about you and her so that it makes the interest phase, which we'll talk about in a second, easier, all of that helps. But attention, just get the attention, very simply. Second stage in the hooking process is interest. Now, the question to ask yourself here, um, again, the premise is you have their attention already, they're, they're somewhat focused on you. They're gonna pay attention to what comes out of your mouth. You may have a very short window of time, you may have a long window of time, but you do have their attention. Now, in order to get their interest, what are people interested in? What do people focus on? Um, it's been said that what captures your RAS, what captures your focus, is something that is either perceived of as value or a threat. Okay, so that's what you're looking to do when you're developing interest, is you're looking to become either value or threat to the girl. And if you do that, now she will pay attention to you for a longer time. She will actually um, give you that longer window. She will give you a greater... What are you guys focusing on? <laughs> I will give you guys... <laughs> that is what people pay attention to, to in life. That is what people notice in life is what is of value or threat, right? We're being bombarded with so much stimulus all the time that we can't possibly focus on all of it. We focus on what is relevant to our survival, meaning that which can help us accumulate and genetically prosper, or that which can save us from dying. So value or threat. Now, how do you do this? What is of value, what is of threat? The easiest way to do this is to make it about her, okay? Anything that's about you is of value or is a threat because um, if it's something about yourself that can be improved, that's useful information as you move forward in life and move towards excellence. If it's something about you that's negative or that could be perceived ne uh, could be perceived badly by people, then it's a threat to you that that exists and you would want to eliminate it in order to maintain your social survival. Okay, so value or threat. What are some examples of these? Um, the best example of this on the top of my head would be something like a mini cold reader or a cold read, right? You're so X, it's just like Y, etc., etc., right? some sort of observation about them, and then continue it on. Or a full-on cold read. You take some characteristic, um, you seem like you're from the Midwest, right? If a girl hears that, instead of just the very simple, where are you from? You seem like you're from the Midwest implies a lot of things. It implies the question, what is the Midwest like? How are you perceiving me? Um, in what ways am I like the Midwest? Do you perceive that as a positive or a negative? Am I being complimented or insulted? Again, it provokes interest. It opens their mind to all these different things. Um, because it is more interesting, more um, unique, I suppose, for most interest is interesting, it's a little redundant, um, but it's more unique than what they're usually getting. It's something that's a little surprising to them, but it's also relevant, okay? It's not just surprise, it's relevance. In the attention phase, just surprise would be enough, but in the interest phase, you need to make it relevant. You need to make it something that they will attach onto. So what could you be doing here? You could be making a strong comment. Hey, you, come here, one second. The Adventurous. I love that look. I love that look. Hi, how are you? Uh, we're shooting a little video for work. Thank you. You have the most like, um, you have this very like innocent, shy sort of like walk to you, but then you're like a little devious. What? Is that working for me? I mean, I've only just met you. Who are you? Here, I'll get off. I'll get off the, the camera for a second. I'll come, I'll come talk to you like a normal human being. The third of the phases of booking the set is the decision phase. And this is an interesting phase because this is what most people think of as the difference between the social hook and the sexual hook. Alright, this is the difference between her being amused by the conversation and just sort of like um, engaged by the witty banter and actually attaching emotion to the interaction, actually attaching the interaction or the emotion to you as the man involved in the process. So, uh, when, when that is the case, in order to make that happen, what you need to do, we call it the decision phase, you need to put them to, or you need to put her to a decision, okay? Um, and the decision is you're going to apply social pressure. You're going to um, take a risk, you're going to put something out there and she will either accept or reject it. So she can either reject the interaction or accept the interaction on your terms. You are now deciding the terms of the interaction. You're making the decision to be man to woman 
and then she can make the decision to comply or not, right? Now, there are times when you may make the decision, put it out there, and she won't comply. That's fine, too. That's when you cycle back to the um, interest phase, go back to more platonic conversation, and then you try again. You keep cycling back through over and over and over again until you actually get that response you want, and that's why sometimes it can take time. Sometimes they're not willing to make that decision. Sometimes they're not ready to comply. But if you have enough interest over enough time, you get enough of that history of them enjoying the conversation, seeing you as a cool guy, building more of your sort of value in other ways, you dramatically increase the percentages, increase the, um, the likelihood that you are going to get that decision eventually through patience and then through taking the proper steps. Okay? Now you wanna try and get that decision, and again, this is gonna happen in the action phase as well, you wanna try and get it through um, different means each time. If you do get a rejection on trying one time, then you want to try it a little differently the next time. You want to get them to make a slightly different decision, but you want to get them to decide. So what are you doing here in a tangible sense? Well, you're doing things like putting social pressure on them, right? Um, saying something a little bit risque. Um, leaving a silence in the set that they either need to fill or it will be awkward. Things like that. So you're risking the set, you're risking the interaction, and putting the pressure on them to continue. What you're basically saying to them on a subconscious or a subcommunication level is that I am not just going to carry this set. You are involved in the set. There is something being put upon you and you will not be able to be a guiltless passenger in the set. You're gonna to have to accept some culpability. You're going to have to um, be a woman in the set and not just a passenger. So that's what you're doing. Again, making a man to woman, leaving those silences, and making potentially strong statements of intent or um, risque things that um, put them to a decision. Again, put them to the decision to either lose the interaction entirely or move it forward. And as long as they don't lose it entirely, we call that yellow light, right? Red light would be over, green light is you got it. Yellow light is it's in the middle. As long as you're getting yellow light, you keep cycling back, try again, cycling back, try again until eventually you get it. And it should be almost inevitable if the conversation's pretty good and if you don't have distractions. If you have distractions, that's a different issue because it got obviously distractions before a full hook, that's a problem. But assuming no distractions, once you have that attention and interest, getting the decision in action should just be a matter of time and you taking the right steps. Final phase, which is perhaps uh, the most fun phase and the phase we all kind of want to get to, is the action phase. Okay, this is where you're taking all the good work you've done in those first three phases of hooking and turning it into something tangible. I'm sure you've had the experience of um, the set's going really well, you can tell they're interested in you, maybe when they have like the anime eyes, maybe they're even touching you, they're giggling, that sort of thing, but then for whatever reason, the set gets interrupted, right? When a friend comes in, or they order a drink, or for whatever reason, you leave and come back, and then when you come back, it's fundamentally different. It's like that window has closed, okay? But what's happening there, is you've gotten some decision on their part, uh, they, they, they do like you, but they haven't really solidified that in their mind. You've taken that intangible decision and you haven't made it tangible yet. You haven't turned it into something they have to identify with their own. You haven't turned the unconscious conscious, right? So at that point, they're not, they're hooked in that moment, but the hook will not last. You haven't really said it. It's akin to when you're fishing and, and the fish kind of bites on the hook, you feel the nibble, but you still have to pull it and really set that hook before you really have the fish because it could just go away uh, before that happens. Okay, so that's that's what this action set, action step really is. It's pulling that hook taut, making sure they stay on the line over the long haul, over the long term, so you can come back to it, you can reopen it, and they'll stay in team, all right? And so what you want here is some form of compliance or at least non-non-compliance. I know that's a double negative, but just deal with it, okay? Compliance would be something of the, of the ilk of come here and they come to you. Or better yet, some sort of logical verbal commitment of, um, oh, you like me, it's cute. And they affirm that they do indeed like you, right? Or you can, another interesting one is, how long have you or when did you? As sort of lead-ins, as like false decisions for questions. So when did you decide you love me? Or how long have you loved me? How long have you been into um, witty douchey guys? Right, that sort of thing any of those kind of things. And then if they acknowledge it, if they acknowledge that it's been a while or if they acknowledge you in that sense, now they've made a conscious decision um, that they are there. Okay, then the non-decision 
would be something along the lines of if you tell them, you know what, you're done, you're free to go. And they stand there and they don't go. Right? You take that risk of giving the push away. You take that risk of doing something that's sort of like um, either insulting or that they know on a social level they should say no to. They know on a social level they're embarrassing themselves by staying or they're lowering their value by staying. And because they allow themselves to have their value lowered that way or because they allow themselves to subject themselves to that embarrassment for you, their brain has to lock in and think, why am I doing this? I must like him. And so that makes it a tangible thing, okay? So what you're looking for here, again, is compliance of a form. So you're looking for either non, non, or sorry, non, non compliance or actually overt compliance. So that's the action phase. And that's when you really have it. That's when you have that tangible advantage and you can sit back, know that you've hooked the set, move into the other phases, start leading, start escalating, start screening, and start doing all the more fun parts of game that we all look forward to. So to summarize, the four stages of the hook are attention, interest, decision, and action. Attention very simply means get her attention. If you don't have the attention, you can't do anything with it. Now obviously, if you can get the attention in a way that doesn't create a negative, that doesn't get in the way of interest, decision, and action, that's better. But theoretically, all you need is the attention, and from there, it's theoretically winnable, all right? So just get the attention. That means open strong, um, be assertive, um, be physical if necessary, open the whole set, those basic concepts that we all know, okay? Interest means make it relevant. Okay, what do we pay attention to? Again, remember, right, based on RAS, we pay attention to things that are of value or are a threat. So make it value or threat. There are a lot of different ways to do this, but one of the easiest ways is to make it about the person in question, make it about her. Okay, so when you're doing that, um, things like cold reads, things like, um, statements of um, judgment, things like um, even asking questions, right? the get to know you questions. Um, and although it's not really technically good, it does serve that purpose of making it about her, right? Also things like eye contact, or just like looking or mirroring an expression, having an interaction where you're in the moment together, having a similar shared experience, also makes it about her, okay? So that's what we're looking for there, is to make it relevant. And again, um, if it's, either complimentary or perceived as negative, if it's a positive or negative emotional spike, that makes it either more valuable or more of a threat. And so again, that's going to be um, more effective in that realm. Also things like if you have social proof at the time, makes you more value, so anything that is coming from you is more valuable. Having good body language, good posture, good um, uh, tone of voice, that sort of stuff, again, makes you more valuable, so it makes anything that comes from you more valuable makes it easier to capture interest, so that's how that all plays in, okay? Uh, third phase is the decision phase. This is when you're shifting from just conversational to emotional. You're taking that risk, you're being man to woman, you're showing intent, you're squaring up, you're making eye contact, you're even making maybe dangerous statements. You're also doing things like um, leaving awkward silences, even things like pressure on, pressure off, being a little too much pressure on even to make them commit, make them make some sort of emotional investment in the situation to arouse emotions. And again, they don't necessarily always even have to be always positive emotions, but you're making it emotional. And you're also, again, because it's man to woman, you're making it about you. It's not just as a fun conversation, you're starting to make that transition of this is a fun guy. Now they haven't recognized that logically yet, but it's there emotionally. This is where you'll start to get the IOIs, you'll start to get the giggling, laughing, touching, anime eyes, that sort of stuff. This is when you're getting into the decision phase. Sadly, this is where most guys stop. They stop short of the action phase, and so what happens is they get these like, what I consider half open sets, or half hooked sets, where it is good at the moment, but if there's a distraction, they lose momentum, or um, they, they leave and come back, there's not that logical commitment. They haven't taken that intangible and turned it into a tangible, and so it can fade at any moment. In order to make it tangible, in order to make it last, in order to have the leverage to really use it later in the interaction, what you need to do is you need to get action. So again, this is one of two things. It's either compliance, ideally, or non-compliance. Non okay? So you're either getting them to comply to something or getting them, ideally, to verbally or physically acknowledge or accept an action, i.e. agreeing to a kiss, i.e. telling you you're cute, i.e. agreeing with you when you make a positive statement about yourself, that sort of thing. That's a form of compliance or non-non-compliance is when you say something to them that socially they should reject. They know that 
they're being insulted or that they're being put under a, an unfair amount of social pressure or treated in a way that they should not accept. The fact that they accept that, that is a form of compliance. And then based on the law of commitment and consistency, uh, they are sort of uh, locked into acknowledging that they must like you. So there's that conscious decision and that's when you'll get the set really, really hooked. A lot of guys miss that. Again, remember the metaphor for that, that is like a fish on the biting on the hook and then you pull it and you set that hook. Once you set the hook, the fish is on the line. You can take your time to reel it in. But if you don't set that hook, the fish can wriggle away at any time. Okay, so again, those are the four phases, attention, interest, decision, action,